These are 3D printed shoes that I 3D printed on the K2 Plus out of TPU. Now you might be wondering, how did I do that if everybody's saying you can't print TPU on the K2 Plus? Well, obviously you can. Now those were out of 95A TPU, which is kind of a hard TPU and pretty easy to print, right? Well, I also printed these slippers out of 80A TPU. And look how soft this is. That stuff is pretty, pretty soft, right? So how'd I do that on the K2 Plus if you can't print TPU on the K2 Plus? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you, and it's really easier than everyone thought. So I started out just like everyone else. I started out with the 95A TPU on the K2 Plus, and second or third layer in, it failed extruder jam, you know, the whole nine yards, right? And I went through all of it just like you probably did, but I wasn't willing to give up there. I knew there had to be a simple solution to this because there is no way that Creality is putting out their flagship machine and it just can't print TPU, a common filament that everybody wants to print. So I was bound and determined to get this done and I figured it out. And I'm confident enough to make this video because I've got over 80 hours in printing these shoes alone without a single failure. And then I've got another 38 hours just in these sandals right here without a single failure. So with that said, let's jump into this mod and let me show you how simple it is to print TPU on your K2 Plus. Let's go. So the first thing that you'll notice about my machine right here is this top loaded filament. Now that's one thing that you're gonna need to print if you wanna do TPU successfully. Now moving on inside the machine, this is where the magic happens, right here. But first things first, you're gonna wanna come right here and turn off the motors on your printer. That way you can move the print head around. Now that you got your motors unlocked, now you can pull the print head forward right here. And then we're gonna wanna take off this screw right here. You'll have a screw right here. And then if you pull it over right here on the side, well, since I've already got my mod done, you might not be able to see it. But then right there in the middle, that's the one you wanna get. Don't mess with that top one. Don't mess with this bottom one right here. Right there in the middle, the one that's inset. Now, once you've got your screws out, it's pretty straightforward. You just kind of pull back right here on this a little bit and then relieve the tension and then you just pull straight back on your extruder. Now, mine's going to come off fairly simple because I have the spring already swapped out on mine. All right, so that spring right there, that's going to be the culprit of your TPU failing right there. And so you want to be very careful. I've already swapped mine out, but if you have the factory one, that thing is super strong and you want to cover that, wear eye protection, whatever you need to do. But whenever you dislodge that spring right there, you want to be very careful because it will shoot out. Uh, mine's not going to do that because as I've said, you know, I've already changed it out. So in order to get this out, this bar right here, it just lifts straight out. Now, like I said, it's preloaded with that spring, so just be careful. So you're gonna take that out. Let's get that out of there. Now mine might still shoot out a little bit. No, not even a little bit. Yeah, mine was, look. So there's my spring right there. That's the aftermarket spring that I installed. And as you can see, the little 3D printed part right there at the end, that's a spring stop and you're gonna need to have that. And I'll include that STL in the uh, description of the video. So basically all you're gonna do is take this apart. You're gonna get these springs from Amazon and then you're gonna take out the factory spring and you're gonna swap it with this one. Uh, first, you're gonna wanna print this little spring stop. I think it prints in like two minutes because it's so small. And uh, you put that in the end right there. And then you basically take out the old one and then you wanna reinstall this new one right here. So that can be a little tricky getting it back in, but it is a ton easier with this new spring, let me tell you.
and there you go i've got it in there and basically i just use this little flimsy aluminum thing that i have right here that i've i don't even know what it's for but it definitely works so you can use like an aluminum business card or something like that that really helps if you could stick something down in there like that and then slide it down and then just pull it out it actually works great so there you go now you have your new spring installed you have your spring stop and that spring stop is going to come in handy because here's what creality did so creality actually left a heat insert right here so you can actually install a thumb screw right here to adjust the tension on that spring right there so Creality almost had it right and I'm not sure why they deviated but they did so now the next step you're gonna want to do you could do this up there you could do it down here but basically you're gonna find a thumb screw that fits this is the one that I chose to use um, you're gonna take a piece of a spring you'll just cut it kind of the length of the shaft of your thumb screw and then you'll put that over there that'll keep tension on your thumb screw so it doesn't come out and then basically you're gonna run this thumb screw right there you're gonna screw it in and then you'll just put tension on that thumb screw and then this is how you will apply tension to your filament from now on so that's what you'll have when it's all said and done it'll look like this now your thumb screw doesn't have to be a, a big giant like mine uh this just happens to be easy for me and I don't use the cover on mine. So if you don't use the cover, then it's all good. Now, if you wanna use the cover, this thumb screw is gonna be in the way. You're probably gonna to have to print another uh, print head cover there. So now all that's left to do is get it put back together and you're good to go. But real quick, let's go over some filament settings and I'll show you what settings that you need to change. And you might be surprised by one of the settings that I tell you to turn off. Okay, so you're gonna wanna make some adjustments right here in your settings. So go to your TPU profile, whatever it is that you're using, and you're gonna scroll down here to volumetric at the very bottom, the speed. Uh, this one is preset at six. Now I printed my shoes at a three. Uh, you can try six and see how that works for you. But if you're having issues, I would bump that down to three. And then on your nozzle temp, uh, first layer 220, other layers 215. That's where I had mine set at. And then let's see here. What else? Pressure advance 0 0.04. That's good. And then another big thing right here is going to be cooling so let's go to cooling uh you're going to make some changes here now so number no, no cooling for the first layer yep that's good full fan speed you're going to put that at five four or five somewhere around there and then right here you're going to want to change these two from 100 you want to change that over to 30 and then right here at maximum you'll put that at 40 and so now your minimal is set at 30 your max is set at 40 and then you'll leave these the same uh let's see what else should you change here fan speed 80 percent. that doesn't matter because you're not using it okay settings override okay here's a good one right here is and a lot of people are going to tell you that you know you don't need to mess with this or you need it but retract on layer change you can turn that off and then wipe while retracting you can turn that off wipe distance doesn't matter because you're not using it um and then yeah all of that doesn't matter so just turn off retract and then you'll notice a big difference in your print and let's see multi-filament does not matter notes okay so that should be about it guys if you're using these settings along with the spring change then you should be good to go all right so keep in mind that little short screw it goes up here at the top left and then the uh the long screw goes down there at the bottom right torque goes down pretty good and then put this side screw back in and you are done and that's all there is to it. Once you complete this very simple mod, you'll be printing TPU reliably on your K2 Plus just like I did. So don't let these people fool you into thinking that you can't print TPU reliably on this Creality flagship machine. That just didn't make sense from the get-go. Now granted, 
reality should have had this nailed down from the factory, but hey, when you're making tons of 3D printers, you can't get every single one of them 100% perfect every time. And like I showed you before, it looks like they almost did this. I'm not sure why they just didn't follow through with it. I kind of get why they didn't because 90% of people want to print PLA. So these machines are set up to print PLA perfectly and those springs are tuned to be able to handle PLA all day long. But I still feel like they should have put that adjustment spring in there for people who wanted to print TPU so they could adjust it themselves. It's really a simple mod and actually moving forward the K2 Plus should have these on there. Even the K2 Pro and the K2s when those come out they should definitely have an adjustment screw on there to be able to adjust the filament tension on the extruder. So that's it guys. If you enjoyed the video make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, comment, let me know what you want to see next and hey who knows I might start working on trying to print TPU from the CFS. What do you think about that? So anyways, until next time, as always, stay ready to 3D print. See you next time.